In this project, we'll be drawing the object shown here, which is an arrow sign. You can see that the units of measure is in inches. They are decimal inches with a precision of three places to the right of the decimal point. And the limits for the drawing will be set to 22 by 17. In studying the object, I can see that the outside area consists of three rectangles. The largest outer rectangle has a length of 12 and a height of 7.5. Inside the rectangles we have an arrow sign. You can note that the overall included angle of the arrow itself is 60 degrees. So if I was measuring that from a horizontal line, it's 30 degrees above horizontal. This angle coming down on the outside of the arrow is 30 degrees to the right of vertical. Also, the arrow is centered inside of the rectangles with a distance of 1.5 from each end. I'm going to start a new drawing and navigating to my AutoCAD drawing file, I'm going to use my template, simple title block A. This opens to my Layout tab. I'm going to change to Model Space. And I'm going to set the limits. So I'm just going to type limits from the keyboard. And I can see that the lower left corner is at 0, 0. I'll hit Enter to accept that. Upper right corner, I'm going to set to 22, 17. And then I will do a zoom all, Z enter, A enter, to zoom my drawing area to the limits. I'm now going to start my arrow sign with a rectangle command. I'll click in the upper left corner to start my rectangle command. I'm going to right click and choose dimensions off the pop-up menu because I know that the width of the outer rectangle is 12 and its height is 7.5. I'll click and zoom and pan to center that in my drawing area. Now inside this rectangle are two smaller rectangles. The first one has an offset of 0.375. So I'm going to use the offset command and because this rectangle is a made up of a polyline or all continuous lines I can offset it in one step. I'll set the distance at 0.375 click on the rectangle and you notice that because it's a polyline it's all continuous and then click to the inside offsetting that rectangle to the inside. I'm going to hit enter to end that command and hit enter to start my offset again. This time I'm going to set it for 0 0.180, the next offset value. So choose this inner rectangle and inside that offset again. I'll hit enter to end the command. Next I'm going to draw the arrow that goes inside the rectangles. I know that this arrow is centered vertically and horizontally inside of the rectangles. So I'm going to draw a construction line that will assist me in drawing the, the arrow. I'm going to start by finding the midpoint on this end of the rectangle and track in a distance of 1.5. From here I'll start drawing my line turning on ortho so that I get a straight line that's exactly nine inches long. Now I know that the, cent that the arrow point starts from this end point and the height is one and a half overall height which would mean half of the height would be 0.75. I'm going to offset this line and I'll set it for 0.75. Offset this line up and end that command. So that'll be the upper edge of the arrow. 
Now, to draw the point of the arrow, I'll start from this endpoint. And I want to check my settings down here. I'm going to go to my object snap, right click, go to settings. I can see the endpoint, midpoint, and center. Object snap and object snap tracking is turned on. I also need polar tracking to be turned on with an increment angle of 30 degrees. I know that my angle is 30 degrees from horizontal and 30 degrees from vertical. I'll say OK. And now coming up here is a horizontal line at 180 degrees. I back off 30 and I can see polar tracking lock in here. So the distance is 3.375. Hit enter to accept that. And then here's a vertical line. I know that this line is 30 degrees past. So I see my polar tracking lock in 30 degrees past. And here I don't know the distance, but I can see that I'm getting an intersection object snap where the X is. So I'll click the mouse and that end the command. So that has snapped me to that line and it's given me the correct angle. At this point, I'm going to trim off the excess line. So I will use a trim command. I'm going to use this part of the arrowhead as my cutting edge. Hit enter and trim the extra line. With half of the arrowhead drawn, I know that now I can use my mirror command to mirror this top portion onto the bottom. I'll use a crossing window going from right to left, choosing that par portion of the arrow, hit enter, and now it wants a mirror line. I'm going to use this construction line, the endpoints of it, for my mirror line. I'll hit enter to accept the default that I want to keep the source object. And now I've created the other side of the arrow. The construction line that I use can now be erased. So I'll choose it and hit erase and close the other end of the arrow using an object snap from this end of the line to this end of the line. This completes my arrow drawing.